Hey everybody, Wendy Devereaux here. Welcome to my channel. Hope everybody's having a wonderful summer. If you would like to get inspired to do a blingy green piece like this, then please keep watching. Okay, so I'm giving you a bird's eye view of some of the items that I believe I'm going to be using today. I won't go through them all right now. I will leave a complete list of everything that I end up using in my description box below and I will point it out as I'm using it because I may eliminate some of these and I may add some to it. So yeah you guys let's get started. Okay so I'm using an 18 by 24 inch canvas today and I'm just going to put a base coat of white on here. This is just an inexpensive white paint Dale or Rowney. I get mine from Walmart. It doesn't really matter what base coat that I end up using. I'm finding lately that I like to do just a base coat on my canvas before I do um, my painting. I'm just going to spritz my brush here with a bit of water. Okay, and now I'm going to let that completely dry. Okay, so the base coat of white is all dry on my canvas and now I want to tape my canvas off three inches. Just going to make, doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and then I want to come in on the side three inches. Okay, so I'm just putting painter's tape to completely cover the top portion of my canvas, not my sides or my bottom, because when I do my striping effect, I like painting away from myself. So I wanna be able to get a nice brush stroke without worrying about um, touching this portion of the canvas up here because I'm going to be doing something different around the sides and you'll see later on in the video. Okay, so for the center, I'm going to be using Titanium White Artist Loft. This is Folk Art Thicket. It's a matte finish. Folk Art Mossy Meadow, also a matte finish. And this is Festive Green Deco Art. It's a metallic. And I'm just going to start with my white. Then my Mossy Meadow. I put a video some time ago on my striping technique. I'll leave a link to that in my description box. It just has some tips and tricks in there that I've learned over, over the years for this technique. And then my festive green. I'm just making sure that the paint colors are evenly distributed throughout my canvas here. And then the thicket. Now I'm not going to put too much of the thicket on right yet because it's a dark green. And if I need to add some later on, I will. Okay, and these are Iorta brand brushes. I get mine from Amazon. I really like these for blending. I'll leave a link to these as well in my description box. Okay, now I'm just going to load up my brush.
The more you go over, the more I go over my brush strokes, the more blend I'm getting with my stripes. Oh, I think I'm going to like that. I'm going to remove my painter's tape. What a beautiful color combination. I just love green. Now, I'm going to let this completely dry because I am going to tape this off again, like the striping portion. And then I'm going to paint the border. I'm going to go with the thicket, the darker green for my border, because I think it'll really um, pull out the dark green that's in my striping. And then when I put my silver frame around it, it'll just, oh, I think it'll look really, really pretty. And I have another Eorta brush here. It comes in a set of 12 and there's different widths, the brushes. And I'm just going with a little bit narrower size from the other one that I used for my striping. This paint is really thick. I'm just going to spritz some water on it just to thin it out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to let that completely dry, put on a second coat, and then I'll remove the tape, and then I'll bring it back. Okay, the paint is all dry on my canvas, and I want to get a satin finish on this whole thing, so I'm going to use Mod Podge Satin Finish. I love the satin. Um, it's not as glossy as the gloss. And it just gives a beautiful sheen to the overall piece. And I just have a foam brush here. on my sides as well. Okay, now I'm going to let that completely dry. Okay, so now my Mod Podge is all dry and I'm loving the satin finish on that. Let me just move my canvas and hopefully you can see the sheen. And now I'm going to add my mini mirror tiles. I get my mini mirror tiles from my local Dollarama, but you can get them off of Amazon. There's lots of suppliers on there. And I just have a bunch of uh, pieces here from other projects and I'm thinking that I might do a row of two on the inside and then another row of two on the outer edge. So I've got some that are already done in a row of four. 
just going to bend them and then I use an X-Acto knife and then I score them. And these have a self-adhesive backing on them. And I'm just going to place them for now. Some of them have little broken tiles on them, so I'm going to go through the ones and get the nice ones. Okay, my mini mirror tiles are all cut out and they're just laying on my canvas for now. And the reason why I taped off this portion on my canvas before I painted this was so that I could get a nice straight line all the way around and it helps guide my mini mirror tiles so that I can get a nice straight crisp line of mini mirror tiles all the way around, if that makes sense. So now what I'm going to do, and I've mentioned this in my other videos, th this is like a puzzle when you get your mini mirror tiles to uh, fit without any gaps. I have to now take one piece off at a time and place it down exactly where I have it just sitting. Otherwise, it's not going to go back together again. It's kind of like a puzzle. And I won't press them down right away. I'll wait until I get them all on in case I have to move them slightly. And I'm not going to add any glue to these. Sometimes I do. I'm going to be using this one in my uh, craft room, my studio. I think some of you do make these and you sell them. Um, so if you're selling them or giving them as gifts, even just a little bead of a tacky glue would work. I find too that these mini mirror tiles from my local Dollarama have a really good adhesive backing on them and they stick pretty good. Okay and then I'm just going to take a cloth and press them down. I don't want to use my bare fingers, they are glass. So so pretty. Okay and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the exact same thing on the outer edge with two rows of mini mirror tiles. I'm going to bring it in from the very edge so that all of my mini mirror tiles line up just like I did here so that there are no gaps. They're really easy to work with. You just have to fiddle around with them a little bit. Okay, so I have my mini mirror tiles on my piece and I'm absolutely loving the way this border has turned out and I'm just going to leave it like that. I was thinking that maybe of adding some of my rhinestone ribbon wrap in between the two uh, rows of tile but I love it just the way it is and now I'm going to put on my crushed glass and glitter. So some of my viewers have commented that they don't have access to a Michaels where I get my uh, crushed filler glass. So I was able to find some off of Amazon. I will leave a link in my description box. It's called Happy Filler. And I just have it in a bowl here. And then I also have the Ashland brand in a bowl. And I don't see a whole lot of difference here. So I'm going to be giving this a try on this piece today. And then my glitters, I've got a chunky silver glitter from Michaels. I got this big jug, it was on sale for $5. I have some extra fine silver recollections, sage, 
Recollections Extra Fine. And this is a new one. This is Pine. It's a chunky glitter, Recollections. Because I don't have a center point where my two paint colors meet, I'm going to put a line down the center of my canvas. Now, my area here to here is 11 inches. So the center is about five and a half inches. Just gonna do a light line. This will help guide me to keep a nice straight band of crushed glass and glitter going down the center. I did this a while back on another canvas and I didn't do a full line and I, it kind of went wonky on me. I'm going to be adhering my crushed glass and glitter with my Tri-Art Liquid Glass today. I will leave a link in my description box um, where you can buy this online. And I just have it in a little squeeze bottle here. And I just have a small little foam brush here. Just going to push it up to my tiles. Because this isn't a very large area where I'm going to be adding my crushed glass and glitter, I'm not going to make my peaks too long. I'm going to kind of just make them a little smaller in length than I usually do. I'm going to go up with some taller ones here. Do the same down here. Okay, and if you find that you want to get a peak a little bit more sharp at the tip, you can just take a smaller craft brush and just push it up into a better peak. Now before I put my before I put the crushed glass on, I'm going to just add a little bit of the sage just on the tips because they tend to dry out quicker. And I want to get something on them before that happens. And then it eliminates me having to come back and doing and do too many touch-ups. Okay. use a spoon. I'm not sure about this. Um, I've been using the Ashland brand for so, so many years and I know that it doesn't cut my skin when I just grab it with my bare hands, but this I'm not 100% sure because I've never used it before. It seems to be the exact same stuff. Now, I'm not going to put a lot of this on because I have a lot of glitter that I need to add and I want to make sure that I don't completely cover my liquid glass before I get all of the glitter on here. I need to make sure that there's um, liquid glass exposed so that my glitters will stick, right? So this is the chunky silver. I just um, transferred it into this bottle because the hole in that bottle, in the original jug there, it's too big and it'll come out too quickly. Okay, 
Okay. And then this is the pine chunky. So I'm putting my chunky on first. I always do. Now I'm not gonna add a lot of the pine, just enough to pull in my dark green border. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in with my sage. my extra fine silver and I still want to come back in with my sage one last time so I want to make sure that I don't completely cover all of my liquid glass here okay and then I'm going to finish covering any exposed liquid glass with my sage And obviously, if you can't get these uh, particular glitter colors, whatever greens and silvers you guys like, I mean, you can't really go wrong with glitter. Everything's better with glitter. Okay, now once this sits for about mm, 30 minutes to 40 minutes, I'm going to let this liquid glass kind of set for a little bit so it's gummy. I'm going to come back in with a piece of paper, just a piece of printer paper, and press it down to make sure that the crushed glass and glitter is really adhered well to the um, liquid glass. I don't want to do it right now because the liquid glass is too wet and it will just squish out. So once this is all dry, I will bring you back and we'll brush it off. Okay, so the liquid glass is all dry and now I'm going to brush this off. Let's see what we've got. See, there's a lot of static on here, so I'm just going to use a dryer sheet. And just wipe it. And that'll help loosen that up. Okay, now I'm going to give this a quick vacuum with the soft brush on my vacuum cleaner, and then I'll display it for you. Okay, everybody, here's the finished look. This green and silver combination is absolutely beautiful. I am in love with this piece. Bring in nice and close here. I just love this painting technique because you never know what you're going to end up with. And all of the beautiful glitters, the silver and the different greens. And I don't see a big difference between the crushed filler glass that I used here from Amazon and the Ashland brand at Michael's. They both have the white on the back side because it's mirror. Because they're not going to get the mirror on the other side without having it painted on the back side, correct? Oh, look how sparkly that is. And there sure is a lot of static in this, um, in this glitter, but I don't mind that effect. It kind of feathers out from my peaks, like from my icicles. And I could get rid of all that with uh, using a bounce sheet, 
like a dryer sheet and then vacuuming it off. Oh, this is so sparkly. And I like doing the frame just with the two on the inside here and then the two around the perimeter, like on the outer perimeter. Oh, this is so pretty. So yeah, you guys, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. It feeds the algorithm and it lets me know that you enjoy this type of a video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that little notification bell and you will be notified when I upload all my future videos. And as always, you guys, I so appreciate you taking the time to watch and God bless.